This video will explain how to find all the new blocks, items, and mobs in the 1.17 update Caves and Cliffs Part 1. There are a lot of changes, so this video will try to summarize the 1.17 update so you can easily step in and play right away. Also, I have a playlist with 22 videos that go into more detail about the blocks, items, and mobs in the 1.17 update. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the subscribe button to get Minecraft tutorials and Let's Plays. The first addition to the 1.17 17 update is the amethyst geode structure. It is a structure found underground in the overworld and is rare. There's a 1 in 53 chance for each chunk to have a geode. There can be openings to the geode on the surface or underwater. It also can be connected to the cave system. The geode is loaded with new items and blocks. The outer layer of the geode will consist of smooth basalt. Smooth basalt is a new block and the other way to get it is by smelting basalt in the furnace. The smooth basalt has to be mined with a pickaxe. The basalt block can be found in the nether in the basalt delta and the basalt pillars in the soul sand valley. The next layer of the amethyst geode is composed of calcite. This is a white decorative block that can only be mined by a pickaxe. The geode is the only spot that calcite can be found. The inner layer consists of amethyst blocks and budding amethyst blocks. The difference is the budding amethyst will have a creeper face or X on them, but they both look very similar. The amethyst block has to be mined with an iron, diamond, or netherite pickaxe. When you walk on the amethyst block, it will make a unique sound. It is a decorative block. A budding amethyst block, if you try to mine it, will be destroyed. If one side of the budding amethyst block is covered in air or water, it has a 20% chance to create an amethyst cluster every random tick or 68 seconds. The budding amethyst block is important for growing amethyst clusters if you want all the items that can be crafted from the amethyst shard. We should explain the difference between an amethyst cluster, amethyst bud, and amethyst shard. An amethyst bud is stages 1 to 3 of an amethyst cluster. An amethyst cluster is the fourth stage and final stage of the amethyst cluster. Last, the amethyst shard is when you mine an amethyst cluster, then the amethyst shards will drop. If you mine an amethyst bud, it will drop nothing. You can mine it with silk touch enchanted pickaxe to get the amethyst bud. If you mine an amethyst cluster with a pickaxe, it will drop 4 amethyst shards. Breaking it other ways will only drop 2 amethyst shards. If you use the fortune enchanted pickaxe, it can drop up to 16 shards at fortune 3. The amethyst shard has several different crafting recipes. 4 amethyst shards can be crafted into a block of amethyst. Unfortunately, you can't craft it back into amethyst shards. An amethyst shard and 2 copper ingots can be crafted into a spyglass. The spyglass can be used to zoom in to 1 tenth of your current field of vision. Last is 4 amethyst shards and a piece of glass can be crafted into 2 tinted glass. Tinted glass functions the same as glass, except you can see through it and it will block out light. This could be used to lower the light level for farms like mushroom farms or mob farms. Next is the new copper ore. Copper ore can be found in the overworld between Y layer 0 to 96, so from bedrock to above sea level into mountains. The Y level the copper ore is most likely to generate is 47 and 48, and it decreases at the end of its ranges. There will be 6 attempts, and the blobs can have 0 to 16 ores in them. Copper ore has to be mined by a stone pickaxe or better, and drops 2 to 3 raw copper. This can be increased with the fortune enchantment to potentially an extra 3 raw copper per a level. At fortune 3 it can be up to 12 raw copper, but the average is 5.5 raw copper. The raw copper can be smelted to get 0.7 XP and a copper ingot. Three copper ingots can be crafted into a lightning rod. A lightning rod can be used to deflect lightning strikes during a thunderstorm. This could be useful if you're using flammable materials for your builds. When the lightning rod is struck, it will also emit a redstone signal of 15. 
Also, a trident enchanted with the channeling enchantment when thrown at a lightning rod can be struck by lightning. The channeling enchantment allows you to summon a lightning bolt when it is a thunderstorm. Nine copper ingots can also be crafted into a copper block. A copper block can be crafted into nine copper ingots. The copper block can change colors when placed in the world or oxidize. There are four stages being copper, exposed, weathered, and oxidized, going from a copper to a green color. It can take one Minecraft day or 20 minutes for a copper to advance one stage however this can be affected by the copper blocks within four blocks either stopping oxidation if it is a lower oxidation level or slowing it down if they are all the same oxidation four copper blocks can be crafted into four cut copper blocks cut copper blocks can further be crafted into stairs and slabs the cut copper block can also oxidize when placed in the world if you want copper blocks or cut copper blocks to stay at their current level of oxidation you can wax them by crafting them with a honeycomb if you want to remove the oxidation to make it go back to a stage or remove the wax the axe can be used to scrape off the wax or oxidation Oxidation. The oxidation can also be removed with the lightning rod being struck by lightning, but it is random the amount of blocks that are affected and the stages it goes back. Another new block is the deep slate block. It is a variant of stone. It attempts to generate 10 times per chunk and groupings of 0 to 160 from Y level minus 4 to 16. The deep slate could be mined with a pickaxe. When it is mined, it will drop a cobble deep slate block unless mined with a silk touch enchanted pickaxe. When ores generate where deep slate is, they will be a deep slate variant of that ore with the ore in the deep slate block. The deep slate can be infested with silverfish in the mountain biome. The cobbled deep slate can be smelted to get the deep slate block. Cobbled deep slate can also be a substitute for crafting recipes involving cobblestone like brewing stands, furnace, and stone tools. Cobbled deep slate can be crafted into deep slate brick, deep slate tile, chiseled deep slate, and polished deep slate. With cobbled deep slate, deep slate brick, deep slate tile, polished deep slate, these can all be crafted into slabs, stairs, and walls. The chiseled deep slate and the deep slate block are only blocks. The deep slate brick and the deep slate tile blocks can also be smelted in the furnace to get cracked deep slate brick and cracked deep slate tile blocks. Another new block is the tough block. Tough generates two times per chunk in a size of 0 to 862 between layers 0 to 16. Tough is a decorative block and has to be mined with a pickaxe. Powder snow is a new block. A cauldron can be filled with powder snow in a snowy biome when it is snowing. This can be picked up with an empty bucket to get a powder snow bucket. To place the powder snow, you'll have to empty the powder snow bucket and the only way to get the powder snow is using the empty bucket again. You can't mine it with tools or by hand this will destroy it. The dispenser can place and pick up the powder snow with a bucket when activated. If you wear leather boots you can walk on powder snow otherwise you will fall through the powder snow moving similarly to going through cobwebs. You will not take suffocation damage. Being in powder snow will give you the freezing effect giving you damage. You can stop this by moving out of the powder snow or wearing a piece of leather armor. Another new block is the moss block. Two moss blocks can be bought from a wandering trader for an emerald or the moss blocks can be found on the shipwreck in the supply chest at the front of the ship at 42.1% chance. Applying bone meal to moss blocks can convert the blocks around it like pods of rooted dirt, dirt, sand, gravel, stone, deep slate, tough, granite, andesite, and dorite into moss blocks. It will do this if it is in a 3x3 to 7x7 area. Applying bone meal can also generate grass, moss carpet, tall grass, azalea, and flowering azalea azaleas on the moss blocks. Moss blocks are part of the crafting recipe for mossy blocks. A cobblestone and a moss block can be crafted into a mossy cobblestone. A stone brick and a moss block can be crafted into a mossy stone brick. Moss carpet is another kind of carpet and can also be acquired by crafting two moss blocks into three moss carpet. Azaleas and flowering azaleas are flowers that are like saplings for the azalea tree. As azaleas and flowering azaleas are flowers, they can also interact with bees. 
When bone meal is applied to either, it will grow into an azalea tree. An azalea tree will consist of oak logs, azalea leaves, flowering azalea leaves, rooted dirt, and hanging roots. The azalea and flowering azalea leaves are the same as other leaves. The only difference is when they are broken or decaying, they drop azaleas and flowering azaleas instead of saplings. Rooted dirt blocks are meant to be the roots of the azalea tree. Two rooted dirt can be bought from the wandering trader for an emerald. Rooted dirt can also be mined with any tool. The rooted dirt will not change to grass or mycelium if next to them and can be covered by other blocks and will still be a rooted dirt block. If you use a hoe on rooted dirt, this will turn it into dirt and drop a hanging root. If you apply bone meal to a rooted dirt block and there's a space underneath the block, hanging roots can grow on the bottom of the block. The hanging roots have to be shared to drop as an item. Using anything else will destroy them. Another set of new blocks are the dripstone block and the pointed dripstone. Two pointed dripstone can be bought from the wandering trader for an emerald and the dripstone block has a possible trade from the mason villager at the journeywind level for four dripstone blocks for an emerald. Both the pointed dripstone and the dripstone block can generate in caves although rarely. The pointed dripstone can grow and get bigger. To do this, it has to be placed on the bottom of a dripstone block and there has to be a water source block above the dripstone block. It takes about 5 minecraft days or 100 minutes for the pointed dripstone to grow by one block. Another pointed dripstone can grow from the ground under the pointed dripstone if there is a block 11 blocks below the pointed dripstone. The pointed dripstone won't grow if the tip is waterlogged, landing on a pointed dripstone, or falling on a pointed dripstone can do a lot of damage to the player. The pointed dripstone can be used to fill empty cauldrons if there is a water source or a lava above the dripstone block and there's a cauldron 10 blocks below under the tip of the pointed dripstone it can fill with water or lava. Four pointed dripstone can also be crafted into a dripstone block. Another new plant is the small and big drip leaf. Two small drip leaves can be acquired for an emerald from a wandering trader. The small drip leaf can drop when sheared, otherwise it will be destroyed. Small drip leaf can be placed on clay and moss blocks, as well as dirt, farmland, grass, and podzol if those blocks are underwater. Applying bone meal to a small drip leaf will turn them into a big drip leaf and increase the size by 1 to 5 blocks tall. Small drip leaves do not grow on their own. If you apply bone meal to big drip leaf, it will grow one block taller. Big drip leaves can drop using any tool if you break them at the bottom of their stem, the entire big drip leaf will fall. What the big drip leaf does is when you try to walk on the top, it will slowly start to collapse, making a sound. It could be used for parkour. If you apply redstone, it will prevent the drip leaf from collapsing, and if you hit it with a projectile, it will collapse even if it is powered by redstone. The candle is also a new light source. The crafting recipe is a honeycomb and a string. If you want to dye the candle, it can be crafted with a dye. The candle can be mined with any tool. The candle is similar to sea pickles. Four candles can be placed on one block and the light increases from three if it is one candle to 12 if it is four candles. It can be lit with flint and steel, a fire charge, or flaming projectiles. Candles can also be placed on a cake. Glow lichens can be found on blocks underground and more frequently in ravines. Using bone meal on glow lichen will cause it to spread. The glow lichen can be acquired by using shears, otherwise it will destroy the glow lichen. The glow lichen emits a light level of 7. Glowberries are a new food item. 3 to 6 glowberries can be found in a minecart chest in a mineshaft at 38.7% chance. Glowberries can be planted by placing them on the bottom of a block, creating a cave vine. The cave vine grows to be 2 to 26 blocks long. Each time the cave vine grows one block, there's a chance for the cave vine to have a glowberry on it. A glowberry growing on it will not prevent it from growing further. The cave vine does not require light to grow. If you apply bone meal to a cave vine, it will grow a glowberry. The glowberry emits a light level of 14. 
The glowberries are similar to sweet berries. If the glowberries are eaten, they restore 2 hunger points and 0.4 saturation. The glowberry can be used to get foxes into love mode, reduce the link from a baby to become an adult. Foxes can also break glowberries similar to sweet berries. Another change is copper ore, iron ore, and gold ore now will drop raw ores instead of ore blocks. This change now allows you to use the fortune enchantment on pickaxes to increase the amount of iron and gold. The process to get ingots is the same as you will smelt raw ores to get ingots similar to the old ore blocks. Nine raw ores can also be crafted into raw copper, iron, or gold blocks. The raw ore blocks can also be crafted back into nine raw ores. A new block that also has been added is the light block. This is an invisible block that can produce a light level of 0 to 15. The function is the same as air and can't be mined. They are meant for map makers and for adventure maps. The light block is not in the player's creative inventory and can only be acquired through commands. Now let's get into the three new mobs in the game. Goats are a new mob that generates in the mountain biomes, not all mountain biomes, just the mountain biome. They are a neutral mob and if attacked they flee. There is a 2% chance when a goat spawns for it to be a screaming goat. This is a goat that will make more noise and is more likely to charge. Wheat can be used to lead the goat if they are within 10 blocks. Wheat can enter them into love mode and reduce the length it takes them to grow to an adult. Goats can be put on a lead. Goats don't have any drops at the moment. They can be milked with an empty bucket to get a milk bucket. They can jump up to 10 blocks to get over obstacles like small holes or powdered snow. Goats have the ability to ram players, mobs, or armor stands. If the player is standing still, the goat will ram you. The goat's attack doesn't do that much damage, but the ram does 9 knockback or 4.5 knockback for baby goats. The goat's horn is not in the game yet, in bedrock it is, but it is planned to be added later. The next mob is the axolotl. The axolotl is an aquatic mob. This is a passive mob that spawns in water and land biomes below Y level 63. This means under the surface. So the spot they'll probably generate is in water and underground caves. The axolotl has five different colors, leucistic, wild, gold, cyan, and blue. Blue is the rarest color at 0.083% chance of spawning. The axolotl will eventually suffocate after being on land for 5 minutes. If it is raining, they will not suffocate on land. The axolotl can be attached to a lead. The axolotl can be picked up with a water bucket, creating a bucket of axolotl. They can also be released from the bucket of axolotl. They can move on land, although they move very slowly. Axolotls are susceptible to the impaling enchantment, which is a trident enchantment that increases the damage to aquatic mobs. The axolotl will attack aquatic mobs besides turtles and dolphins. They also attack drowned and prioritize hostile mobs like the drowned over non-hostile mobs like a cod. If they take damage, it is possible for the axolotl to feign death, acting like they're dead, and regenerating their health. If the player kills a mob the axolotl is fighting with, the axolotl will remove mining fatigue and give regeneration to the player. There is a 2 minute cooldown between them being able to attack non-hostile mobs. The axolotl can be led using a bucket of tropical fish. A bucket of tropical fish can also enter them into love mode and reduce how long it takes a baby to grow to an adult. The last mob is the glow squid. The glow squid is a variant of the squid. Glow squids spawn in total darkness underwater, and they spawn 5 blocks below where there are blocks like deep slate, andesite, dorite, granite, and tuff. They should spawn in underwater caves. The difference between a glow squid and a normal squid is the glow squid has a luminescent appearance and star particles around it. The glow squid will not affect the light level surrounding them. When hit, the glow squid will stop glowing and shoot a cloud of turquoise ink. When killed, the glow squid drops 1 to 3 glow ink sacks. This can be increased to up to 6 with the looting 3 enchantment for the sword. The glow ink sack can be crafted into an item frame to create a glow item frame. This will light up the item in the frame. Also, the glow ink sack can be used on text on signs to make the text brighter at low light levels. 
As the glow squid are an aquatic mob, they are susceptible to the impaling enchantment for the trident. There are several new advancements added in the 1.17 update. The first one is called Is It a Plane Advancement, can be achieved by looking at the ender dragon through a spyglass. The next one is Is It a Balloon, is looking at a gas through a spyglass. Is It a Bird, is looking at a parrot through a spyglass. The next one is Light as a Rapid, which is walking on powdered snow using leather boots. Surge Protector is being within 30 blocks and a villager being within 6 blocks of a lightning strike with nothing being set on fire and the villager not being harmed. Whatever floats your goat is when entering a boat with a goat. Glow and Behold is when you use a glow ink sack on a sign. Wax On is using a honeycomb on a copper block. Wax Off is using an axe to scrape off the wax off of a copper block. The Cutest Predator is using an empty bucket on an axolotl. The Healing Power of Friendship is when an axolotl gives you regeneration when you assist an axolotl killing a mob. One block that I didn't mention is the Spore Blossom. This is a block that can be put on the bottom of a block and can emit green particles. At this moment there isn't a way to get it in survival, but it is available in creative and will be in the lush cave biome in 1.18. Other changes include the beacon's beam can now be seen 1343 blocks away instead of 256. Cauldrons can now be filled with lava and powdered snow. The composter has new compostable items like azalea leaves, glowberries, moss carpet, small drip leaf, hanging roots, flowering azalea leaves, glow lichen, spore blossoms, azaleas, moss blocks, and big drip leaf. Rails can now be waterlogged, meaning you can move in a minecart through water. Also, water will not break the rails if they flow over them. Suspicious stews can now be eaten at a full hunger bar. Drowned will now drop copper ingots instead of gold ingots. Shockers will now spawn a new shocker when hit by another shocker's projectile. The puffer fish's poison effect has been reduced from 4 to 2. Firework rockets now show up in the recipe book, although it is only for one flight duration. A lot more mobs will now drop cooked items when killed with fire. For example, guardians now can drop cooked cod. Mineshafts don't generate floating in air, and corridors for the mineshafts will have support pillars or chains. These are really the most interesting changes I noticed. There are hundreds of fixes and changes in this update. I should also mention because of how this update was split into two, it has made some of the additions a bit confusing. For example, both the shock sensor and the bundle were removed from this update. The 1.18 update is more about biomes and world generation. Here's a list of the additions that are in 1.18 and aren't in 1.17. First off, the new underground biomes like lush cave biomes, dripstone caves, and deep dark biomes. The warden mob, the new mountain and cave system, also the archaeology system, won't be in 1.18 and will be pushed back into a later update. Also, the world height limit will be increased and bedrock will be lowered. A lot of what the 1.18 update is going to do is add things that are actually going to make the blocks, items, and mobs that are added in the 1.17 update a lot better. Anyways, I think that is enough about the 1.17 update and it is time to play the Caves and Cliffs update. Music